Hey guys, my name is Austin Gregory, and in this course, we're going to build a cool little quiz game that's going to allow us to ask questions and provide optional answers where the player will then have to choose what is the correct answer for this question. Now, it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward, uh, but we're going to have basic questions that are just strings of questions. Then we're going to have image questions that are going to provide an image and then an optional caption. So you have an image of a bird. The caption can say, what is this bird? That kind of thing. And then we're also going to have audio clip questions where we can click a button to play an audio clip with a caption as well. And it would be like, what is this instrument playing? Or what animal makes this noise? And then you're going to have options to choose from. At the end of each question set or each topic set or however you want to organize your questions, you'll see how easy that is to do once we get our system set up. You're going to get scored on how you did for that set of questions. So if there's 10 questions and you got seven out of 10, you got a 70% or a 70 or whatever kind of um, arbitrary uh, rating system you want to add for your game. But in this case, it's going to be all pretty straightforward and all pretty simple stuff. So I want to create a new project. I want to call it Super Quiz. And I'm going to use the latest version I have available to me, which is 2018.3.2. And I'm just going to make sure that I just have it on 2D. It doesn't really matter for this, but it's just going to be a UI game. There's not going to be any um, game graphics beyond just the interface. So it's going to be pretty simple stuff. And I'm going to click Create Project. And while it's doing that, I want to show you that in this folder here, I have a couple bits of media. I have a picture that's going to just be um, a field we can just use for the uh, a dummy question. And this is just a Wikimedia Commons image. And then I have an outline of a country, just for an example of another image question. And then I have a, an audio clip here that's just um, a flute. So what I want to do in this first lesson is I want to set up the UI for our quiz game. So what I want to do in this first lesson is get started by setting up our UI for our quiz game. And we'll see if we can knock it all out in one quick lesson here. So what I want to do is create just a UI. Uh, let's create a UI panel object here. Now what this is going to do for us is create a canvas object and an event system object, which we need to work with the Unity UI system. So I'm just going to just lay out my quiz uh, question and answer layout here. Now it could just be like a half and half 50 50 thing here, or we could do I don't know, whatever you'd like to do here, but I'm just going to have a section for my questions and then a section for my answers. And I don't want this to have an image on it necessarily. You could if you would like to do that, but I just want to just have the object there to help me lay out my game here. Now, this isn't going to stretch. We're not going to do any fancy UI stuff. I'm just going to make sure that it works. So I'm just going to anchor this to the left side here and just like that. So now this is going to be where we can put our questions, whatever the template may be. But we're going to start with a simple, just a string question, just a you know text question. So within this panel, I'm going to create a UI text mesh pro text object. We want to use text mesh pro because it's just better. And I'm going to just import the TMP essentials here, which is going to give me all the stuff I need to use text mesh pro. So we have this text. I'm just going to center this uh, up top a bit here. And we can just stretch it out. Let's see. Uh, we'll just do something like that. It depends on what kind of questions you plan on asking here. I plan on my questions to be pretty simple and straightforward. You know, just a, a sentence. But you may want to do some some serious, you know, paragraphs. <laughs> so you want to uh, set up your layout and your design to accommodate that. But in my case, this is where my question is going to go. Pretty cool. Let's make it a question at least. Okay, I want to make sure that I have it centered and I want to center it uh, horizontally and vertically, just like that. And we can increase the font size a bit here. Uh, you can also make it auto size so it fits in the text area that it has. So if you were to keep typing, for instance, this is cool too. It'll resize to match that, which is pretty cool, I guess. So you probably want to do that, in fact. And I was actually lining this up so they could put something below it, but this is just the text question. So it doesn't have to have anything below it there. So we'll just do it 
uh, just right in the center. And then off to the right here is where we're going to have our buttons that are going to be the answers for the question. So for the question, you know, what uh, what color are elephants typically? You would have blue, green, gray, and uh, purple. I don't know. <laughs> and then you would just click on gray and you get the answer correct and move on. But even if you get the answer incorrect, you'll still move on. And at the end, you'll just see that you got one incorrect. So to do that, what I want to do is add another panel that's going to go off to the right side of our question here. So just drag this off just like that. And again, we're just going to anchor this to the right. No fancy UI stuff for this. We're keeping the UI very simple. We're focusing more on the data and the interaction with that data, uh, the, uh, the storing of that data and the displaying of that data. And we can just name these um, answers question. Now I want to be able to have however many answers I want for every question. So one can have true or false. Uh, one can have three different numbers as an option. One can have 10 different uh, options. So it just, it doesn't really have to uh, conform to, you know, four answers per question. Uh, it's just a silly restriction. So we're not going to have that. So in order to accommodate for that, we're going to have to make sure that we have a flexible system that can deal with however many buttons we throw in there. So to do that, I'm going to have on answers. First of all, let's just throw a button in here so that we can see uh, what it's going to look like. So if I just throw a button in my answers panel here, now on answers, I'm going to go add a component and I want to add, it already has it there, vertical layout group. Now vertical, you know, up and down, we're going to lay out our objects that are within this panel. Uh, we're going to stack them on top of each other and we're going to make sure it fills the space that we have. So to do that, we're going to say child control size width, which means it's going to stretch to the width of the panel and child control size height, which means it's going to stretch to the height of the panel. Now that doesn't really work if we have one option as an answer, but also one option doesn't work for a question uh, in a quiz game. So we'll never have that issue. But if I were to duplicate the answer, now we have two, you see that we have two buttons and they just divide the space evenly, which is exactly what we want. But I can tell we're going to need some spacing in between there. So let's add a little spacing. And I can also tell when I add some padding around the side of this panel. So we're not just snug up against the corners. Maybe you want that. Uh, it's kind of cool looking in fact, but for this, we're just going to add some padding around the sides. Cool. Now if we add more buttons, you can see what happens there. As many buttons as you want. Now I want to make sure that I take this text that's in here. I want to delete that text and I'm going to make sure that I add text mesh pro text. We want to keep all of the text using text mesh pro. It's just sharper, has more options. It's more efficient to use. It's just better all around answer. And again, we're going to make sure it's centered vertically and horizontally. And let's take this button here and we'll just change the color on it a little bit. I don't know what we do with it. Just do something with it there. And on the, um, the answer text here, we could do, if we do auto size, that may work pretty good because we can have any size answer in there. And also we have options for auto size. So the, the minimum size could be like 14. The maximum size could be like 60. That would work pretty good. That way it can get really small, but it can also not get too big. Notice the, um, size goes down there, but I don't like the margin around that. So if we were to look at what's happening here, I can grab this yellow box and drag it in. And that's going to be my margin on the text element. If we go down to extra settings, we have margins left, top, right, and bottom. I can just add margins all around just like that. And now let's try this again. There we go. Now it's not snug up against the button. Look in the game view here. Uh, the game view is in free aspect. And since our UI is a little, you know, it's not, it's not fancy. Like I was saying, um, we're going to make sure that we restrict everything to 16 by nine. And, uh, just, just for this example. And, um, we see that that causes an issue here because of the size of this. So what we could do is I know we said we weren't going to do anything too fancy, but I want to make sure that we work at every size. Go to my canvas here and go to UI scale mode. I can set this to scale with screen size, which means when my screen size changes, this will also scale. It's not going to be completely static, but we have a couple things to do here. I want to make sure the width and the height is 50, 50. 
the way that it affects the scaling is it, the width and the height uh, both do it exactly. And the reference resolution, I would like to be a bit more than what we're looking at there. So maybe just like 720p. And that gives us a starting point so we can start scaling our objects uh, to work with this. So I just want to drag this in here and I want to drag this over. And we can just make this fit. We should have done this before we did the, the layout, but sometimes you got to go back and make a few changes. And that's perfectly fine. So there we go. Now, if I were to go into here and I were to go back to free aspect, um, it doesn't completely break like it was before because we're scaled down to match. But as long as we stay within 16 by nine resolution, um, we should be fine. If I were to pull the game view out here, it's gonna stay within 16 by nine. And the last thing I wanna do for this lesson is I wanna create a prefab of our buttons that we have for answers because we're gonna be able to create those at runtime for every answer that we have per question, pretty basic stuff. So I wanna create a prefab folder really quick here, prefab, and we're going to put an answer button in there. I'm just gonna name this answer button. Um, and I wanna delete these other buttons here. And I wanna call this, actually as our question prefab, or as our question uh, panel, uh, text, it's gonna be called text question. And that's because this is going to be the default question layout. We're going to have the audio layout, and we're going to have the image layout, and we're going to design those in the next lesson, guys. So my name is Austin, and I will see you there.